Howdy my totally is always tubular gamers and we're back with you guessed it another ranking video and today we're talking Final Fantasy yep it's about time we talk Final Fantasy on the channel but what Final Fantasy are we talking today I feel like I could do a couple lists based on Final Fantasy so today we are talking about the modern action RPG Final Fantasy titles. You know, over the years Final Fantasy has gone through a ton of different eras and the series has evolved in so many different ways from those original titles. Like back on the NES, Final Fantasy was turn-based and then they moved over to the ATB system which is where they were for a long time but then they went more real-time with like Final Fantasy 12 and then now they're full action RPGs where you have full real-time action hack and slash combat similar to Kingdom Hearts. Over the last couple years, there's been a number of Final Fantasy games that have had this style of gameplay, and I've actually played all of these. You see, over the last, I don't know, 20, 30, almost 40 years at this point, there's been a ton of Final Fantasy games, whether it's the numbered entries or the spin-offs or all that, and I have not played all of the Final Fantasies. I haven't even played all the numbered games, and I don't lie to you, I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to rank all the numbered titles till I've played all the numbered titles, and so we're not there yet. I'm pretty close to playing all of them. But like I just mentioned, I've played all of the newer Final Fantasies, the action RPGs, and so that's what we're ranking today. I'm going to be going over all of the action RPG Final Fantasy titles, give them all a little review, just my thoughts on them, my opinions. If you don't know which ones are the action RPGs, or at least what I consider the action RPGs, I consider that. In release order, Final Fantasy Type-0 HD, Final Fantasy XV, the FF7 Remake, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion, and finally Final Fantasy XVI. That's a lot of final. If you take a shot of anything but water every time I say final, finally, or fantasy in this video, you will be dead by the end of it, so I do not recommend. Anyway, those are the games I'm covering, the action RPGs. Before you go after me and say where's like Dissidia, that's a fighting game, or where's Final Fantasy 11, 12, and 14, Realm Reborn, the greatest MMO like ever made, those aren't here. I don't consider those action RPGs. 11 and 14 are MMO RPGs, and I'd say 12 is just more of a real-time RPG rather than an action RPG. Despite saying that, I'm sure there are plenty of people that are going to comment, you forgot this game, or you forgot this game, or that game, and you know what? I want to read them all. I want to read all the comments, everything you got to say to me. It gives me more incentive to actually play all of the Final Fantasies and talk about every single one on the channel. So like, share, comment, sub, let me know your thoughts down below. We're going to be looking at all these games, worst to best, comparing them, give them all a little review. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. I know talking about Final Fantasy on here is pretty much walking into a minefield and you're probably not going to agree with me. There might be some hot takes, there might be some cold ones, I'd love to know down below as always. So let's just get right into it. Of these six games, what do I think is the weakest? And so here we have Final Fantasy Type-0 HD. This game initially released on the PSP in Japan back in 2011, but it got a worldwide release for the PS4, Xbox, and PC in 2015. This is the version I played. Now, I don't know how hot of a take it is to have this game at this place on the list, but I just have never really been able to get into this game, and I've tried more than once now. The game is kind of like a spin-off to Final Fantasy XIII. It takes place in the same universe and uses a lot of the same mythos and lore and terms and all of that fun stuff. So if you didn't care for it in Final Fantasy XIII, you might not like the story very much here. The story in XIII, I mean, I thought it was okay, I guess. But it certainly wasn't one of my favorite stories in the series. But yeah, this game takes place in the same universe and it focuses on Class Zero, a group of 14 students from the Dominion of Rubrum who really have to fight this neighboring empire when they launch an assault on the other crystal states of Orients. In doing so, this entire group becomes entangled in both the efforts to push back and defeat the forces of the empire and the secret behind the war and the existence of these crystals. Now when it comes to the story, I just don't know with this one. Every time I've tried to get into this game, I just fail to get engrossed into the story or really all that interested. Like, there's some interesting aspects and the depiction of war is pretty serious in this game, but all the student stuff, I don't know, why does it remind me of Harry Potter so much? Anyway, aside from that though, I just really wasn't able to ever get into this story. I just thought it was a bit hard to follow. There's a lot of terms, there's a lot going on here, and especially by like the midway point to the end, I was just like, well, you, you just kind of lost me at this point. And maybe that's because I wasn't like huge on Final Fantasy 13's lore and terms and all of that, and I had to look up what a bunch of stuff means because it had been forever since I played 13. Maybe I'm just missing something here, and this is a spicy hot take, but just never really was a fan of the story. So when it comes to the gameplay, it's really split into two big sections. You play as Class Zero, an elite fighting force of 14 different students from the school. There's 
life at the school and when you're out on the missions. I know what you're thinking, it does sound pretty similar to Persona and I'll be real, I thought that immediately too and it is similar in a number of different ways. So when you go out on the missions, you get to choose three students to go with. You can play as any of them and all the other ones go in reserve just in case you die. And these missions mostly consist of very linear levels where you get into a lot of combat. Now the combat in this game plays decently similar to say Crisis Core. So it plays like a light hack and slash where there's combos, there's a bunch of moves, and then there's even some RPG elements like spells, some cooldowns, etc. And you know, as you defeat enemies, you get XP and you become stronger, you can upgrade your magic, you even get the ability to summon monsters. And it's nothing you haven't really seen before, especially from Final Fantasy. Now the combat, it's alright in this game, I'm not going to say it feels particularly great, it does feel a bit clunky and a little awkward. Despite it being the HD version on newer consoles, it still plays like a PSP game, especially when it comes to the movement and the combat. It just feels a little clunky and it feels a little off, and I never thought it felt all that satisfying. I mean, it's fine, but I've certainly seen a lot, and I mean a lot better from this series. I'm gonna just say the combat is nothing to ride home about, at least a lot of these missions are interesting. There's a number of real-time strategy missions as well, and I'll be real, I just didn't really care for these at all. These felt just a little shoehorned in and it kind of reminded me of when like Assassin's Creed had RTS elements and people were like, why is this in the game? Take this out. But I wasn't huge on these. So when you're not in the mission, you're exploring around the school. So you know, you can hang out with your classmates, you can go to class, you can breed chocobos, there's actually a bunch of side quests and you can even explore places outside of the school like the liberated towns. Now this gameplay loop, like the story, I just really couldn't get all that into it. Like there's nothing hugely wrong with this game, there isn't some big glaring issues. Yeah, it's a bit clunky, it's a little unrefined in the combat area, and the RTS parts aren't my jam. And the camera kind of sucks, but the combat, I mean, it's still alright, it's got its moments, and when you're not in the combat, I mean, it's a decent enough loop, it's just, it just didn't grab me, I just wasn't able to stay interested and I didn't really want to press through the game any further, I felt like I was kind of forcing myself and that's just never really a good sign. The presentation was alright, it seemed a bit inconsistent, some characters clearly got a lot more attention than others, but I mean it seemed alright enough, it clearly looks a lot better than the original and the music seemed cool too, it's just... This game clearly did not click with me the way that it's clicked with some people because I've heard some people say they really love this game and I was like, really? You really love Type Zero? And if you really love this game, you can let me know down below. But really, that's all I gotta say about it. I don't necessarily recommend it. I think it's just eh. I think there's so many other better action RPG Final Fantasy titles. I mean, if you've played all of them, then maybe you should try this one, but I, I just don't really recommend this one. And so here we have Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin releasing in 2022. So this game takes place in an alternate universe and is a prequel to the original Final Fantasy on NES. And the story sees a bunch of characters coming into this world to fight the malevolent chaos. Now, when this game was first shown off, it was just memed to death for just how ridiculously edgy and just silly it is. But, you know, after the game came out, I didn't hear as many people memeing on it outside of one scene. And I gotta say, after playing through the whole game, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this game. I know this game isn't everyone's cup of tea and there were plenty of people who didn't really care for it, but I was actually quite satisfied with it. Again, I'm a pretty big Team Ninja fan, but I really did enjoy my time here. The first thing I'll get out of the way is the story and the main character, Jack. I'll just be real, the story is stupid as hell. Every cutscene had me cracking up with how bad the writing is, how rushed it feels, how unnatural it feels, how much Jack talks about chaos, their whole motivation, and then how the game ends. It It's just stupid as hell. Like, the story, I'll just be real, the story is just kind of dog shit. But despite that, I actually did kind of like the story and its characters. Like, in my opinion, this is one of those it's so bad that it's good kind of storylines where, like, I actually did want to watch all the cutscenes just to see what goofy, dumbass shit would happen next or how unnatural it would feel. And I really liked all of Jack's interactions. And you know, the ending? The ending was actually pretty solid. But the rest of it. I also really enjoyed the setting and the dark, edgy atmosphere that this game had. Maybe it's because I'm still, you know, an edgy 2000s teen at heart, but I really did like how edgy everything looked, and I think the graphics were fine, and I think the presentation as a whole was solid enough, and there's actually some really solid music in this game. 
But when it comes to the gameplay, it plays pretty much like a Souls-like, where it is an action RPG with pretty crunchy, meaty, quick combat with a number of combos, different weapon types, different abilities you get, there's like spells, you have your teammates with you, and no, the combat is not as extensive or in-depth as, say, Dark Souls or even Neo, but I still had a good time with it. You're still like a break gauge and Jack can turn everything into crystals for some reason. And I gotta say, one thing Team Ninja's always been good at is these like executions, finishing blows, because these are great in this game. Also, Jack just completely obliterates these enemies and I really like it. I actually thought the combat was rather satisfying. Despite thinking it was satisfying, did I like it as much as I enjoyed Neo's or Wolong's combat? No, I did not enjoy it as much as either of those, but it was still a fine addition and yeah, there wasn't exactly a ton of depth, but it was still a fun time. Now, while I do like the combat and think it is pretty satisfying, I think this game does suffer in a couple areas. I think the level design and the RPG systems are really lackluster. The level design is extremely linear, basic, and there's just really not a lot going on. A lot of the game really is just straight corridors. Now, Team Ninja games have never had immaculate level design. This isn't Dark Souls we're talking about or anything, but I really do think out of all their games, this is the weakest level design. I just found it to get kind of repetitive. You just kind of run forward, hallway to hallway, little combat arena to combat arena, and it didn't even matter what the location was. That's really all the levels, and it did lead to the game kind of feeling repetitive. The RPG systems are also really lacking in this game, like the loot system is the worst of any of their games. There really is just a best loot button and you'll just end up getting that. You'll get a bunch of garbage and then you just press best loot button and all of a sudden all your team's got the best loot. Like what's the point of this? And I didn't think that the leveling up systems were all that great, the magic system wasn't all that great. The game does expect you to not necessarily grind, but do all of its side missions to be the proper level for these levels. I didn't do that, I just went in under leveled and the game wasn't too difficult. It was harder than the normal game, but it wasn't like as difficult as Neo. And I just really think that both these areas keep it from being truly great. There is also co-op, but I couldn't convince any of my friends to buy this one. And all in all, I really would only recommend this game to Final Fantasy fans and if you really like Team Ninja's gameplay, like you really love Neo. Otherwise, you could probably just skip it, but don't skip. And here we have Final Fantasy XV releasing in 2016. Now, I was waiting quite a while for this game, as was everyone else, but when it finally came out, I was pretty hyped for it, and you know, I think it was actually pretty good. Does this game have some issues? Does it have some big flaws? Yes. But does it have a lot of great things going for it also? Yes to that as well. The game takes place in a world that is very different from just about any other Final Fantasy world. It's very much modern, but there's still fantasy elements to it. And the story is about Noctis and his boys. He's gonna go get married and they all get in the car together to go and well, there's a lot of things that stop them from getting there and I'll just leave it at that. You know, the story of Final Fantasy XV, I know some people aren't fans of it, but I quite like the story of FF15. I think the beginning of it, yeah, it actually starts really strong and there's some really great moments in the story here. It's not all great and there's plenty of parts where I just groan, roll my eyes, or I'm not interested, but I'd say all in all, the story is good in Final Fantasy XV. I like Noctis, I like the boys, I will say there's not really a strong female character here unfortunately, but you know, Noctis and the, the crew, they're all good. At the very least, the game does have a really powerful conclusion that still sits with me even nowadays because I was like, mmm, that's a good ending. Now when it comes to the gameplay, this game played really different from Final Fantasy XIII and its sequels, like it plays really nothing like XIII and its sequels. The game is, you know, an action RPG with a giant open world to explore. For a majority of the game, you're in this actually huge open world and you can drive around in this car. And yeah, you can go main objective to main objective, but there's actually a ton of side content. There's not only side quests, but there's like hunts and a bunch of photo spots to take some really nice looking photos since the game actually looks pretty great graphically and you know even a few years later now it still looks great like this is an amazing looking game with awesome textures awesome character models the frame rate was great throughout like the animation superb like this is a great looking game still but yeah this is a really expansive open world to explore there's actually a ton of side content this is arguably the best open world that the Final Fantasy series has ever seen Usually Final Fantasy is pretty linear for the most part, but here we actually have a big open world to explore and I like it. Now let's talk about the combat. The combat was very different from what people really were expecting from a mainline Final Fantasy game. This was the first mainline Final Fantasy game to have the action RPG combat and I know some people didn't really care for it, but 
I actually really like the combat in this game. Noctis is great, his bros are great, he can teleport by throwing his sword, and it plays a lot more like a hack and slash, more like Kingdom Hearts really. And I think the combat is actually pretty good in this game. It's really satisfying. There's a number of different spells you can do. You can have a bunch of combos with the other dudes here. You can actually play as them post updates. There's a bunch of different monsters you fight. There's a bunch of different beasts you fight when you do the hunts. Like, I actually thoroughly enjoy the combat of Final Fantasy XV. I know not everybody was, you know, falling in love with it or head over heels for it. And a lot of people will just always prefer the menu stuff. But I, I had a great time with the combat of Final Fantasy XV. I can say though the summons in this game are like the best summons that the series has ever seen. They're just fantastic. And then you know the game has all of its RPG mechanics like leveling up your gear, your equipment, your skill points that you get when you level up. But how you get experience is a little different. Just defeating enemies and completing quests doesn't actually just give you the XP. You actually have to bank it at like a camp and eat food. And there's actually other stats that you increase besides you know just really your power level there's like survival skills and cooking and the cooking has always been a big part of this game i really like you can actually cook a bunch of food and gives you buffs and i think this shit's actually cool i always like when games have you know cooking mechanics with really realistic looking food it's one of the reasons you know i love the yakuza series but it's great here also so you know i've been talking a big game about ff15 i really do enjoy it i love the presentation the music the open world the story for the most part but there's a few things that i don't love about this game that i think most people don't love either the last half really the last third of the game just is nowhere near as good as the first three-fourths of the game like the game becomes super linear you leave the open world and yeah it just completely abandons the open world for the rest of the game and so you go into these linear areas that are for the most part just straight lines and these are just nowhere near as good the story's nowhere near as good and I just didn't really like it the pacing is just really odd like the game is really strong the first you know 20 or so hours but then the last couple hours like I just kind of wanted it to end I just did not care at all for the last couple of chapters of this game and you know Square Enix has added some like side objectives to try to mix things up and make it more like the open world but it's too little too late like the the last couple of chapters I think the game just low key falls apart until the very end at least the very last chapter's good, but those other chapters right before the end, like, I've never talked to somebody who went, yeah, I really like those chapters. Everybody I've talked to, and myself included, are just, ugh, I did not like those last couple. Bad pacing and kind of bad second half of the game aside, you know, I still think Final Fantasy XV is worth playing if you like Final Fantasy, if you're looking for an open world action RPG. I think this game is still more than solid enough. There's been a number of DLCs and I've actually tried all of these and they all play really well and it's really cool. You get to play as the bros or even a uh, certain other character, I'll just say. Their mechanics are great, the combat's great, the problem is, is these DLCs are like 30 minutes to maybe an hour long, so it's like, dang, they developed all of this just for like 30 minutes, which, that's upsetting. But in the end, Final Fantasy XV, I still like it, I still recommend it, I know, maybe that's a hot take these days, but I enjoy the game, and I think anyone who enjoys action RPGs would as well. And so here we have Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Now this is a updated remaster of the original PSP game that released back in 2008. Now, I had never touched the original game until this remaster came out, and after playing through it, I gotta say, I was actually thoroughly surprised with how much I enjoyed this game. So the game is a prequel to the original Final Fantasy VII, taking place many years before, and stars Zack Fair. And it's about his exploits in Soldier. Now, Zack, you know, I knew a little bit about him from Final Fantasy VII, but I wasn't really attached to him or anything. But after playing Crisis Core, I actually really do enjoy Zack. I see now why so many people like Zack. Zack is one of the better protagonists to Final Fantasy. He's likable, he's got a good heart, and he's kind of goofy sometimes. And yeah, I really did like him. So with this being a prequel to FF7, we already know what's going to happen to really all of these characters, but the story is still interesting, they still found ways to make it interesting, and it's great to see some of these characters, you know, before their Final Fantasy VII arcs, or what they were like before Cloud became everyone's favorite character. And this game has a really powerful ending, it's really quite gut-wrenching actually. So when it comes to the gameplay, this was the first of the action RPG Final Fantasy games, at least by release order, and this remaster does tweak a few things, it does update the controls a bit, especially since we have a second analog stick now. And it makes things smoother than the original PSP release. But what the gameplay is, is it's an action RPG and it's a quite linear action RPG. A majority of the game you're spent exploring these zones or moving in a straight line. 
With Zack being in Soldier, he's pretty proficient in combat. You know, he has this big-ass sword that he can use, and he has a bunch of different techniques he can do with it, and eventually he can just go nuts with the Buster Sword. But he also has a number of spells that he learns throughout the game that you can use, and then there's, of course, items and some special abilities that use the ATB bar. He also has summons, but the way summons work in this game is quite different. Instead, there's actually a slot machine that is constantly going in the top left corner. Then depending on the match and depending on the numbers, you can actually get a number of different summons and abilities through these like invincibility or everything like your health, magic, ATB bar maxing out or just summoning a giant monster to attack. And the combat, you know, it actually plays incredibly similar to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's actually very similar in a number of areas. The only area that really it's different is how the ATB bar is. Here it's not constantly regenerating, it is a stat like your magic or your health and you do have to use items to replenish it or just get lucky with the slot machine. Now the combat I actually quite like in this game, it's actually really satisfying especially when you get those criticals. The use of magic is nice and I like all the abilities you get. The only thing I'm not really a huge fan of is the slot machine, like the slot machine just feels so out of place here. It just doesn't really feel like it belongs in a game like this, let alone in the combat, right, in the thick of things, and because it's so random, since, you know, it's a slot machine, it can really affect the difficulty of these fights. There are plenty of fights that I had where I absolutely just steamrolled the boss or the enemies because I got lucky with the slot machine, and then I found myself using it as a crutch a number of times when I had any difficulty. I was like, alright, well, hopefully I just get something good on the slot machine, and then, oh, what do you know, I got invincibility for like 10 seconds and I just whooped the enemy's ass. There's one boss towards the end of the game that you actually have a time limit on to beat and really the only way to beat it is just by getting lucky on the slot machine and I didn't like that fight at all, it was just kind of poorly designed and I just don't really care for the slot machine, I think it disrupts the gameplay too much, it's just not needed because without it I think the combat's actually really solid and one of the better combat systems of the Final Fantasy action RPGs. Now, outside of the combat, there is a little exploration here, but there's really not a lot. The side quests are pretty limited here, and they do throw some mini-games in, you know, that are pretty similar to Final Fantasy VII in the remake, and these are fine enough, they aren't really too out of nowhere. The sniper minigame towards the end of the game was pretty funny, though, to see in an FF title. I think the pacing is actually really good in this game, it's constantly going, it, there's really never a dull moment, and a few times it almost felt like it started to drag but then something really interesting happens and I really enjoyed my time with it I was thoroughly engaged and I really wanted to see what was going to happen again I like Zack I like the story the presentation's great this game looks leagues better than the PSP title it runs well and the music is also great like the music is amazing in this game I really like the music actually it's not the longest, taking me only around like 10 hours to finish, but it was a really satisfying 10 hours that, again, I really enjoyed, and if you're a fan of Final Fantasy VII, you're gonna really like this game. If you don't really care for Final Fantasy VII, then I don't think you're gonna like this game very much, but if you like action RPGs, if you like the Final Fantasy VII Remake, then I really think that this game is worth playing. And again, this game was better than I thought it was going to be. I hadn't heard, like, amazing things about it, but I heard people liked it, and yeah, I actually really liked it, so go try it. And so here we have the latest numbered Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 16. There's been a lot of hype around this one, a lot of people saying it's a system seller for the PS5, but what do I think of it? I think it's actually pretty great. The game certainly goes back to the fantasy in Final Fantasy, removing anything close to modern stuff from any of those newer Final Fantasy games and is much more, again, medieval, traditional fantasy based. The story is about Clive Rossfield and you know, all I'm gonna say is that this really is his story. It goes through many years of his life and it's this big epic journey. And that's all I really want to say because I don't want to spoil anything when it comes to this game's story. It is incredibly story and narrative driven. The game is very cutscene heavy with well over like 20 hours of cinematics and I'll just be real, the cutscenes are awesome in this game. This story is great. I actually really enjoy the story of Final Fantasy 16. you know? I was really interested after those first few hours. I was like, oh, this seems really good, but it continues and continues to be awesome pretty much all the way to the end. Sure, there are a few interesting turns, I'll say, towards the end, but the story is through and through just awesome in this game. I love Clive. He's a great protagonist. Everyone he teams up with is great. The antagonists are great and well-defined. Like, this game, it's just great when it comes to the story, its characters, its plot, its narrative, its motivations. 
This is a really different story from any of the other newer Final Fantasy games, and I can really appreciate it. It goes for its own thing, and I think it really succeeds and knocks it out of the park with its story. I, I just really liked it, and I really wanted to see what happened. I was totally engrossed here. I really was fully invested in the story and had to see what was going to happen next. And then we have the gameplay. The combat is actually much more of an action game than an action RPG and it plays a lot more like Devil May Cry than anything else. It even has the same combat director, I believe. And it shows this is the most character action Final Fantasy game of them all. It really does play like a full on hack and slash. There's a ton of different combos and strategies you can do and you can get some pretty insane combos going in this game. Clive, you know, he's got a couple abilities. He obviously has a sword, but he has a number of fire abilities and then he gets more and more throughout the game that I really don't want to spoil. I will just say the combat is very good in this game. I actually really enjoyed it. It was up my alley. I love Hack and Slash. I love Devil May Cry, especially DMC5. That game's great. I ranked all the Devil May Cry games. Check that out. But I found the combat incredibly satisfying, enjoyable, engaging, and it kept me interested throughout, especially because they keep adding new moves to your roster. And then you can also upgrade other moves. And I like the stagger bar. I love working towards it. It's just a really good loop that they actually created with the combat. And I found it really fun. Speaking of abilities and gear, yes, this game is still an RPG and it does have some RPG mechanics like, you know, leveling up and you get points that you can use on this big like tree to upgrade your moves further. There is some basic gear here. It's nothing too complex. When it comes to the RPG mechanics, Final Fantasy 16 certainly is not as advanced as some of the other Final Fantasy games, but I still think the RPG mechanics are fine enough to me. I know plenty of people have said that this is a really weak RPG and it's too limiting and there's not enough like in-depth mechanics and all of that and you know it doesn't have to have really in-depth mechanics. I think that what it has more than works and the combat is a blast. When you're not in combat or in a cutscene you're probably exploring around. This game is not an open world surprisingly but there's a bunch of zones you can actually explore and you do get a number of side missions. The side missions have been really hit and miss for me. Some of them are really good. I won't lie to you. Some of them are quite good but plenty of them are just generic, super easy, super quick and just forgettable. So yeah, bit of a mixed bag, but there is actually a decent amount of side content, and this game just has a really good length to it in general, taking well over 30 hours, maybe around 40 if you do even a couple side quests, and I was again engaged throughout the entire time. The presentation is just fantastic. While I don't know if this is the very best looking FF game, kind of think the remake has that, this game still looks fantastic. The models are great, the textures are great, the frame rate I played on the 60 FPS mode has been great. The motion blur, it's a little annoying and I wish I could get rid of it, but the game still looks fantastic and it sounds amazing too. The soundtrack in this game goes so hard, it is unironically epic as hell, like it is really epic. All of the fights have great music, really all the music is just fantastic in this game. I love the music of FF16 and the voice acting is really great also. It's one of the ways that the story is so good is that the voice acting is this solid. Really, it's just all great stuff. Final Fantasy 16, I think, is a great game. It's an excellent hack and slash, an awesome action RPG. It has an incredibly engrossing story with great characters, and it really keeps you on the edge of your seat. I like the combat. I think the RPG mechanics, while a bit limiting, are still more than well enough implemented. And I think this game is going to sit with me for a long time because of just how memorable it was, how iconic some of these fights were. Some of these fights go so hard, like the boss fights. I don't want to spoil anything, I'm going to just say the boss fights go really hard. That demo was not even showing half as crazy as that some of these boss fights get. Like some of the boss, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to spoil something on accident. I'm not trying to do that. Final Fantasy 16, if you like RPGs, if you like hack and slash games, if you like action RPGs, if you're looking for an amazing story, one of the best stories of any game in 2023, which is saying a lot, I really think Final Fantasy 16 is worth playing. I've had a blast. Maybe this is another spicy take or whatever, but Final Fantasy 16 gets a huge thumbs up for me. What an awesome game. But here we have what I believe to be the best of the modern Final Fantasy games, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, specifically the PS5 version now. Now, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I waited a long ass time for, everyone did, and I was there day one in 2020, middle of COVID. I was so excited though for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I played this game like crazy. I beat it in like three or four days. I was obsessed with it. And you know, now that I've played through it again, 
Oh, those feelings just came back to me, man. I love the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The original Final Fantasy VII, I won't lie to you, it's like my favorite RPG of all time. It's one of my very favorite, like, top three probably games of all time. I love the original Final Fantasy VII. So this remake just hit on all the right places for me. Whether it was the combat, the story, how expanded everything was, the amazing presentation, the awesome music. Like, no, this game just blew me away, and it's just fantastic. The story is a retelling, reimagining of Final Fantasy VII. It is the beginning parts of Final Fantasy VII, though, as it's only Midgard, and it's about Cloud, and, well, there's a lot of shit that goes down. There's more than Cloud here, though. There's Cloud, there's Tifa, there's Barret, there's Aerith, there's Jesse now, there's Biggs, Wedge, there's a bunch of characters here. There's They've all got their own stories, and, you know, the, the, the story of Final Fantasy VII Remake is it's just fantastic it's it's so good like the original Final Fantasy 7 had an amazing story that was incredibly creative and unique and it just was crazy in its own right here though it's like expanded on even more there's a bunch of new stuff here there's a ton of new areas new sections new dialogue like this game really expands on the original to such a crazy degree this is easily like one of my favorite video game stories of all time now being retold in a much more expanded immersive way like how could I not love this like crazy I absolutely did and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time even knowing low-key what's gonna happen since I played the original but this game this game has a few surprises and I'll just leave it at that like I just I love the story I love the characters I love just all of that and when it comes to the presentation oh, this is like the best looking Final Fantasy game of them all this is one of the very best looking games of all time like cloud looks amazing like look at his hair his hair looks crazy we went from some blocky ass mess on the PS1 to this like this is just awesome I love how the game looks the environments look amazing sure a couple times you can tell it's just a JPEG background but the environments look amazing amazing the animations great like the voice acting is great too I love the voice acting and the characters like oh the characters are so beloved in this game but the presentation is just great the music a bunch of the original stuff returns but there's a bunch of new remixes here and the remixes are great too like the original game is like my favorite RPG soundtrack in this game it just goes so hard and then we have the actual gameplay which is you know an action RPG and it actually plays a lot more like a modern AAA game than a traditional RPG and I know some people didn't like that you know they really abandoned the roots it felt like from FF7 but what they have here in my opinion is just fantastic is it better than the original oh you be the judge of that one but what we have here is great so yeah the game is a pretty linear action rpg where you move from area to area there are some side quests you can do but for the most part it's it's very linear and you go into these combat zones and in here you know you have the combat the combat in this game is obviously very different from the original it is an action rpg you can play as cloud barrett tifa or Aerith, and they all play incredibly different like it is crazy to me how different all of them play like cloud Cloud is much more like a hack and slash and plays a lot of a lot like Crisis Core actually. Wielding around the giant buster sword and you know there's like an ATB bar, there's like a MP bar and so you can cast spells, you can do special moves when the ATB bar fills up. There's your limit breaks, there's your punisher mode, there's your summons. Like the combat is incredibly satisfying as Cloud. Like it is just a blast, like slashing the shit out of everything. It is just so much fun in this game. You know, it's not the most advanced hack and slash. Final Fantasy 16 definitely has more combos and more depth going on with it, but I still had a ton of fun here. Then there's also the other characters. There's Barrett where he, you know, he's got an, a gun for an arm and so he has a bunch of gun and projectile based moves his stuff is great there's Tifa where she plays like a fighting game where she just beats the crap out of everything and there's actual combos and like not strings but combos you can do and this is great too I really like playing as Tifa she's my second favorite for sure and then there's Aerith who is you know your healer and she also plays very different from all of them they all play really different and now in the PS5 version with the integrate there's Yuffie who is you know a side mode but even she's hella different from all of them too, and so I'm really excited to see what they do in the future for the other characters, but the combat in my opinion is just superb here. You can control all the party members at once just like the original, but you can play as each one of them individually depending on who's there in the fight. You fight a ton of different enemies, they have weaknesses, I love the stagger gauge that's being brought in from FF13, that was like the best aspect of the game low-key. And then the game just has a ton of awesome fights, like whether it's just a group of enemies or one of the amazing boss fights, like this game goes so hard, like some of the boss fights in the original, you know, they were they were cool, they were unique, but this game, like, 
cranks it up to 11 and goes nuts with some of the boss fights and I really was here for it like I love the boss fights in this game a lot of them are really great and a lot of them are really engaging and actually do put up a decent challenge the game does put up a challenge especially towards the end of the game and that's just the combat there is a fair amount of gameplay outside the combat yeah like I said it is pretty linear but there's a number of like mini games that are thrown in here a lot of them from the original game really every mini game from the original game shows up here but there's a bunch of new ones thrown in and I don't really want to spoil too many of them I'll just say that Almost all of them are actually quite well implemented. There's a few that are a bit annoying that were actually annoying in the original too, like the big hands, but these are few and far between. The mini games are pretty well executed. There are some new side quests you can do as well. These are a bit hit and miss as well. They're not the most exciting, but you know, they're here if you want even more content, if you want even more gameplay. The game's got a really good length to it, 30 to 40 hours. And I know some people have complained about the pacing, saying it's grinded down to a halt since they draw everything out. And you know, that can be a fair assessment. They do draw out pretty much everything from the original game. But I mean, if you never played the original game, it certainly wouldn't feel drawn out. Maybe it was just me though, I was all for it with the drawn out stuff, like I was all here for the pacing and really getting to know these characters a lot better, getting really attached to them, like Final Fantasy 7, the original, does move at a pretty breakneck speed, especially by modern standards, and what we have here I think is great also. It's very different from the original, but I really did enjoy the pacing, I enjoyed the moment to moment gameplay, I enjoyed exploring around the amazing presentation, the awesome story, like I could be on all day about Final Fantasy 7 Remake because I just loved it. Alright, I've been sucking the game off enough now, I think I, I think it's time to end the video. Look, if you haven't played the FF7 Remake, I really recommend it. It's one of my favorite RPGs of the last couple of years, and in my opinion, it's the best modern Final Fantasy, the best action RPG Final Fantasy, and zero problem recommending it. It's getting pretty cheap nowadays, so go check it out before Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 comes out, whatever it's called, Rebirth or whatever it is. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you made it to this part of the video, comment cement is in what's on the ground. See y'all later. Bye-bye.